I step away for two minutes to go to the bathroom, and this happens. My spot has been taken by the dog, and he's like, look how cute I am. You wouldn't make me move, would you, Mom? You jerk. Oh, look at, see, look at those eyes. You wouldn't make me move. I love you. Ha! <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to get down all by himself, and I was like, oh! Oh, that's the camera. <laughs> Meanwhile... The cat has found his favorite toy of all time. I'd like to point out, I have wrapped my gifts. Someone else has not wrapped the other gifts. <laughs> hello. Thought my cat parrot and I would say hello. And then we've got this one here. Look at trying to act all innocent and cute uh oh that's nice if you wanted to know how quarantine is going and what i have looked like for the past nine months this is exactly right uh greasy unwashed hair pulled into a bun with this kind of nonsense going on it hasn't had a cut in a year cat parrot going on um tissue box crafting Nice, weird little eye catch there. Um, yeah. This this has pretty much been my life for like nine months now. Uh, but I wanted to check in and say hello. I hadn't talked to you guys today, really. Um, not a whole lot's going on. It was Jonathan's day off, except he had to go into work. So we went down to Tacoma earlier. Um, and then played some games and then he went to bed and I've just been reading. I'm reading, um, hold on, I gotta switch hands. Christmas on the Coast. And I'm, have feelings about it. It got unbelievably good ratings on Goodreads. I didn't pick it up because of the Goodreads ratings. I just got it at work because it was in the pile of stuff with, it had Christmas lights in the front. And I was like, yes, that is for me right now. Um, it's a romance, and the author is filled with chauvinistic glee. It's kind of shocking. Like, at one point, the female protagonist drags them into a bar trying to get out of the cold, and they're in this small town that she's lived there like, forever, basically, and he's moved there recently. Sorry. Uh, so she's like, oh, I know where we can go and get warm. And they walk in and he's like, this is no place for a woman. Because it's a dive bar. And it's like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, first of all, if you think she's in danger, you're with her. Second of all, that's literally all I can think of, was that he was afraid she'd be in danger. But she's not by herself, and even if she is, like, she's in town with a bunch of other people in public. Like, <laughs> I just, I couldn't figure it out. And it's stuff like that that has happened many times in the book, and I'm just like, what? Um, yeah, there was another time where they're at a different bar, and they're there separately. They both just ended up at the bar. And she was there trying to, there's like a little bit of a mystery going on. This lady shows up and she's, she knows another person in the town, but she's like mysterious and, and like clearly a bad character. And so the main protagonist lady invites her out to the bar to try and like do a little digging. And he and this other guy show up at the bar on their, like separately and see them across the way. And... The woman, the, like, other lady goes to the bathroom and is, like, knocking into chairs and stu stumbling. And when she comes back, her eyes are all, like, bloodshot. And he's, like, she's clearly a drug user. She's, she's clearly high or stoned or, like, you know, whatever right now. So he, from that, is, like, she's clearly a user and she's clearly dangerous. 
to the point where he goes and disrupts them and is rude enough that the female protagonist lady is like, you know what? I can't deal with you. I'm out. And so she ends up leaving and he's like, well, I didn't feel good about being rude to her, but I was glad that I was able to get her safely out of that situation. What situation? Sitting in the bar at a table with half the town also at the bar and our male protagonist, who is a ex-cop and his friend that was there with him, who is a current cop, like who know like her the other guy he was with is her brother-in-law who is an officer and it's like she's not going to be safe in the bar with the two of you sitting there watching her with this leather lady who has made is not being violent has made no threats just the fact that she he thinks she's a user is enough that he's like i have to get her out of here so then the next day he goes over to this lady's house the the her house and instead of being like hey i'm sorry i was a jerk He's like, I don't want you seeing that lady. And she, instead of being like, hey, here's the deal. I'm an adult and can make my own decisions. And maybe you need to back off, buddy. She's like, oh, I felt so warm that he cared. And I was like, no, what? He's a controlling jerk. Holy cow. And then there's another scene where they go. It's like coming up on Christmas time. And they're having, there's like a big to do public party sort of a thing and this lady is emceeing it and apparently she's like a fisherman or something um and they are t hold on let me find it i want to read it because i'm just it's just astonishing okay here we go so bisky castleman was serving as an MC, a resplendent in a gym encrusted red dress that was a departure from her usual worker's attire. Her hair was pulled back as usual, but it looked softer when accentuated with big sparkling earrings, and she wore makeup that emphasized her eyes and high cheekbones. Amber wasn't the only one who noticed the transformation, judging from the admiring way several men watched her. You know, Bisky is actually gorgeous, she said, right? I never noticed that about her before. She usually hides her look her looks she has a spectacular figure now that it's not covered up in fishing clothes and i'm like i'm sorry she can't be beautiful while wearing her work clothes at her job and not wearing a bunch of makeup at her job she's supposed to just wander around town with big huge earrings and like a gem encrusted red dress while she's out working on the docks as a fishing person like what <laughs> she's not she's not beautiful then she's hiding her looks I just was like, what the actual crap? So I'm like two thirds of the way through the book. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. I keep hoping that the author is going to redeem it and be like, oh, by the way, we realized we were being really, really chauvinistic through most of this book. But uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. It's such a bummer because uh, the other. Uh, what am I trying to say? The other holiday reads I'd done so far I loved I loved but this one is just this is the reason I didn't read romances for a long time is because they just were like women needing men to be worthwhile and I, unable to take care of themselves without a man to protect them yeah so <laughs> Anyway, we'll see. And this book gets like 4.4 stars on Goodreads. What are those people thinking? This is going to be like, I don't know. I haven't gotten to the end. Maybe the end really like brings it back. But at this point, I'm thinking it's like two and a half stars. Because mm. I don't even really get the chemistry between the two characters either. Because this guy is so controlling and so, like, protective to the point of just being controlling. And she keeps saying that she's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm my own person. But then never actually tells him off for being that way. She just secretly is like, I love how much he cares. And I'm like, that's not caring. That's controlling. There's there's a difference. And I it makes me sad that you don't see that. So I don't even, like, really feel the chemistry between the two characters. I just feel weird about it. So I'm not even like, yeah, I hope they get together. I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure you could do better than him. 
So, yeah. Okay, guys. So, a couple of Jonathan's um, stocking stuffers came in today. And I wrapped them. And I'm trying to figure out which stocking is his and which is mine. And I can never, ever remember. And I always end up having to ask him every year. And these are the options. Let's see. Can I turn this? Well, that doesn't really help. I turned the flash on. It didn't really help. But these are the options. Which ones do you, which one do you think is mine and which one is his? Because I bought both of them before I met him. I just wanted stockings to decorate with. So then when he moved in, I was like, well, pick your stocking. Because I like both of them since I bought them. And I, I think, I think it's that one. Because I always, I'm always surprised by the one he picks. And I, I think I'd be surprised that he would pick the one with the ruffles. But honestly, I don't know. <laughs> So I'm going to stick his stuff in that one and then I'm going to ask him and we're going to see if I was right or not. And so comment below which one like left with the ruffles or right with the pattern, which one you think is his and we'll see. We'll see if we're right or not. Good morning. Another fun drive time with Stephanie video with the world's most flattering up the double chin. View. I'm just going to sit here like this, except not really. Uh, so, sit rep, to quote, uh, well, now it's called the Grand Tour, but it's called, what was it called before? Um, Top Gear, Top Gear, that was it. I think you guys are crooked. Is that better? Maybe I've made it worse. I don't know. It's really hard to tell from this angle. Um, anyway, so last night, went out and got some stuff done. I went to, so there's a Dollar Tree in the town where I live, but it's not, it's, it's slightly off the beaten path. And by the beaten path, I mean the path that I take. It's not actually, it's on the main, one of the main thoroughfares through, road, through town. There's one that goes east-west, and there's one that goes north-south. And I only take the east-west one. I never take the north-south one. At least not where that is. So, I don't, it's like mildly inconvenient for me to go there. Especially when there's a Dollar Tree in the parking lot at work. What I did not realize is that the Dollar Tree in the parking lot at work is... Well, I mean, I knew it was tiny and terrible. But I didn't realize that was not representative of all of them. The Dollar Tree in the parking lot at work is muy piquito and then also they like don't actually stock the shelves what they do is they roll u-boats of <clears throat> boxes of stock out and then people like rip into the sides of the boxes and it spills out on the floor like a pinata and then it just gets left there and people like pick through that i wish i was joking i am not so it looks like some sort of quarters house that's been ripped into by like you know raccoons or something if you get there when they're, they're like changing seasons like I went right after they put all the Christmas stuff out it wasn't so bad because they literally just put the Christmas stuff out but yeah it's terrible and it's tiny and I watch a lot of like Dollar Tree hack videos on YouTube because there's a couple of YouTubers I watch that do those pretty regularly and I don't really have any huge interest in like putting like refurbishing a bunch of Dollar Tree stuff but I do find them fascinating. I think the creativity to look at something and be like, oh, I could make this completely different thing out of it. Like the people that can just come up with that in their brain is amazing to me. Um, <clears throat> but there was a couple of things I wanted to do. Like I was actually inspired by a couple of the things I saw recently. And they were like, can you go to Dollar Tree's craft section? I was like, craft section? I don't know what they're talking about. And then they were like, and then this other stuff, this uh, is called like nautical rope or jute rope, jute rope to be clear, is in the floral section. I was like, floral section? What are they talking about? So I went to the Dollar Tree in my hometown now, and I was like, oh, craft section and floral section, okay. <laughs> like, there's an entire aisle of just like, Actually, there was two aisles just of, like, floral things. And I was like, holy cow. I had no idea that the one where I live is 
literally twice the size of the other one. There, I didn't see a single thing on the floor. I mean, it was still like, like the actual shelves were kind of in disarray a little bit, but honestly, I've been to Trader Joe's at the end of the day where it looked the same, so whatever. I, I was like, okay, well, apparently if I ever need anything, this is the one to go to because holy cow, so much better. So I was able to get all the supplies I need. Um, I'm going to do, so our Christmas tree that we got, our fake tree, we got a new fake tree this year because our old one, like, none of the lights worked. And it was going to be almost as much to buy new lights for the tree to, like, restring it as it was to just buy a new tree with better lights. Because our other one has, like, the old standard lights. The new one has LED lights on it. So they're going to last forever. And they can be white or, like, clear or colored. So we just got a new tree. It's a little bit shorter than the other one, and it starts, like, really high off the ground. There's a lot of clearance for presents, and I'm like, Ugh. if you had a big family, this would be fine. It is the two of us, and it looks kind of weird where there's just this, like, foot and a half tall gap. So one of the YouTubers did this thing where she took this, like, kind of rubbery bin, like, tub thing, uh, it's, it's like a laundry basket, but it's very tiny and it's solid. It's not, you know, like a basket weave or something. And she like cut the handles off of it and then hot glued jute rope to it. And she made a slice down the side. So she like slid it over the base of her tree, her fake tree. And I was like, it looks super cute. So I'm hoping I can do that with ours. Her tree was a four foot tree and ours is like a six foot tree. So it is bigger. So I'm hoping it's not, the thing's not going to be too tiny and it's just going to look weird. We'll see. And then, um, I am going, oh, I'm making an ornament for my mother-in-law. She, we all banded together to get her a Christmas tree, a fake Christmas tree. And we're all going to like give her ornaments to decorate it with. So I got a kit for Batman, my dog, to do the paw print thing because she loves my dog. And so I have his paw print now, but it's just like on a piece of cardboard. So I wanted to get some, well, they're called craft sticks, but essentially popsicle sticks to like glue together, to, to hot glue that to, and then write his name on it. And uh, they didn't have any at the other store I went to. So they did at this one. And then they also had little, like, it looked like a pallet, like that goes under pallets of stock at the store. They're very tiny and they're like rectangular and so square. And so I got one of those as well. It's like, I don't know which one I'm gonna end up liking better, but I'm gonna try putting this little paw print on both and see. And then I'm just gonna, I got some like twine essentially to, uh, hang it from. So hopefully it's cute. I gotta get it done because we get, like, my sister went over and surprised her with the tree on Monday, Tuesday, I don't know, earlier this week. It is now Thursday, and there's no, there's no ornament from us, so, whoops. I tried, I, you guys all saw, I tried going to Dollar Tree last week and struck out, so. And then, I have, so that's what I did yesterday after work. Today, after work, and tomorrow after work, my, <laughs> I just lost my headband. I um, am putting together little gift baskets for my family members. Since we're not doing Christmas this year, I wanted to do something. So I'm going to do some like baked goods. And then I have, I was able to get all of this at the Dollar Tree by work. I got little... I mean, they're like storage squares, but they're made out of like felt or whatever. Um, and I put a bunch of just like random Christmassy things in there for each family. So like there's some, you know, holiday mugs and there's some like um, chocolate covered Santa marshmallows for the kids and some uh, like like a headband with like reindeer antlers and I don't I can't even, I put this all together so long ago I honestly don't even remember what I put in each ba basket I put together one for each family and 
I was just so excited because everything I watched, they were like, if you want to get Dollar Tree Christmas stuff, you have to go like as soon as they put the Christmas stuff out because it gets, they don't restock. Just what they get is what they get. And it like go, it just, it sells out super fast. So I think I got, I got the stuff like before Thanksgiving. Uh, and I was trying to make sure I actually had enough for each family and I could count it right. Ooh text message so I actually put all of the bins the little like baskets together just sans the actual baked goods they've been sitting on our table for like three weeks four weeks now no probably three weeks so anyway today and tomorrow I'm going to come home from work and do the baking so that we can actually distribute those on Saturday. I'm telling you this because I do not foresee this. Actually, I would still be filming stuff on Saturday for this vlog. So yeah, yeah. It, by the time this goes up, hopefully everyone has gotten their basket. <laughs> if not, uh, maybe I'll have to cut this clip short. But I don't, I don't foresee any reason why that wouldn't be the case. So, <laughs> hello, welcome back to another in the car rambles with Stephanie. Uh, let's see. It's been a minute since we've talked. Uh, tonight, when I get home from work, so today is Friday. There's, it's, it's been a few days. Uh, today is Friday. When I get home from work today, I am going to be doing a bunch of baking because I'm going to make stuff for my family. I think I talked about that already. I'm just going to be doing little, like, Christmas gift baskets, basically. Um, so that's my plan tonight. When I get home, I'll show you the baskets I've got set up. They've been on my tiny room table. The, like, gift parts of the basket I put together when I bought it because I wanted to make sure I, I had enough for everybody that I counted properly. And I bought them, like, before Thanksgiving. So they've been on my dining room table for weeks now. Um, so I'll show you those. I mean, I'll chuckle at my dining room table looks like and then I will get baking slash cooking most of the stuff only one of the things I'm making actually requires baking one of them is like no bake no cook because you do have to melt chocolate on the stove um but then the other one is like done in a pot kind of uh rice crispy treat style where you like warm everything up to mix it together and then anyway um I finished, I finished that book I was so mad about yesterday. I finished it. And you guys, you guys, you know, it didn't get any better. In fact, it got worse. So he gets all mad at her for something that was truly beyond her control and says some terrible things to her. Basically, like, you're a terrible person and I never want to see you again, sort of a deal. And she internalizes it and is like yeah you have to earn love and I'm just not a person worthy of love so I I'm gonna just accept the fact that I'll never be loved and like not worry about it from here on out and I'm like why on earth would you want to be with someone who made you feel like you weren't worthy of being loved at all like what and so his way of apologizing is to propose to her. So instead of saying, like, I'm sorry, I was a jerk, let's work on it, he's like, I'll just make a big gesture. And keep in mind that they've never dated up until this point. They've both been clear that they can't be together. And the last interaction they had was him saying, I never want to see you again. They... He then proposes, he gets to the end, and never in his, even in his proposal, he doesn't say, I love you. He says, to the effect of, like, I have feelings for you that keep going deeper or something like that, but doesn't actually say he loves her. And I'm like, she's supposed to be willing to say yes to marriage, but you ever be like, okay, by the way, I love you? Like, really? He does say it afterwards but it's like after she's already said yes and all of the stuff I'm just like I don't understand why she's drawn to him because she's just like a really like 
she doesn't have a lot of depth to her. The the writer added in things that are like, oh, well, if we add these elements, that's a person with depth. So it's like, well, she survived cancer and that takes strength, which I'm not denying at all. But just saying that doesn't automatically make the character feel deep. It just... The, the whole book was the, the author going... And they're attracted to each other without actually demonstrating any reason why they should be attracted to each other or actually, like, showing the attraction. Just them going, oh, and now they're attracted to each other. And so there was, like, no chemistry between the two of them. I felt like she was kind of a not very interesting character because she just existed and literally the only thing anybody ever talked about was the fact that her cancer might come back which I understand if that is like I have had family members die from cancer I get that if that's looming over you it takes up a big part of your life I get that but that as a like trying to read that does not make the person interesting and nothing actually ever happens with her health like it's just they keep talking about it and that's, like, her only character trait is that she's, like, a nice person who has cancer. And I just was like, this, she's not that interesting of a person. And he's kind of a, like, he's a jerk. I just, there's no chemistry between the two of them. So when uh, he proposed and she said yes, I was like, good riddance. <laughs> like, the book did not redeem itself, guys. It did not. Hello! So interrupted round two so apparently my in-car driving to work rants are just uh destined to be incomplete i just got off work and i'm waiting for my the inside of my windshield to defrost or to like unfog so that i'd pop in and be in to say i realized i think i was looking in the fridge and we have butter but it's just normal salted butter and i I think I'm gonna need unsalted butter. So I think I'm gonna have to stop by ugh, the grocery store on my way home. It's not that big of a deal. I only need like unsalted butter and I'm running low on coffee creamer. So it should be a quick and easy trip. Um, and then going to make, make, make things, things, things. Uh, yeah, so wish me luck in the grocery store, guys. <laughs> I hate it so much, but it's like, I'm literally getting two things, so it's just not worth doing, like, an Instacart order or anything. Uh, plus, I need the butter, like, now, so I don't have time to wait for anything to come in. Oh, well, it is what it is. Life will go on. I'm pretty sure I'll survive. If not, you know, I had a good run. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, I just finished at the grocery store, and I wanted to point something out. This is not a useful way to wear your mask. This does nothing. This, this is how you wear a mask. This is how you wear, I don't know, a muffler. I don't know. So many people, no noses covered. Why? Uh, there were roughly a bajillion people in there and I might have run my cart into a display. <laughs> Because I have zero depth perception and didn't realize the back of the cart was wider than the front of the cart. So I caught the wheel on the corner and it's fine. It was just a bunch of Ritz crackers. And I, was, I didn't knock it over. I just displaced it some. So I push it back into where it goes. No harm, no foul, right? Of course, everyone was like, who's the drunk lady with the cart? <laughs> Who let her drive? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I'm done. I'm going to go home now, eat some food, and start the things. Okay, I just got home, and uh, I think our penguin has had too much to drink. Look at this. <laughs> He's like, uh, I just can't get up. It's just too much today. <laughs> I came around the corner, and all I could see was his hat pointing out past our tree. Uh, whoops. Okay, once again, he has been righted. Had to, had to put his feet back out underneath him. He says thanks. 
All right. Uh, trying out a new, it's a, called a selfie light. It's a little ring light that clips onto your phone because my house is a cave and is super dark and relies completely on natural light, basically. There's zero overhead light in the house, which is great in the summertime. <laughs> in the wintertime, it's kind of terrible. But I'm here because I'm super excited. Where is it? We got a present for Jonathan that it's going to go. He's going to see this before this. I'm not going to actually do that. Let's see. I can do this one handed. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have him open this before this vlog goes up. So oops. <laughs> focus on what I'm doing. You guys like, will get to see it first, but not really. Oh. oh my gosh. It's I sent them a photo of him and she carved this, burned it into the wood with his name. Oh my gosh. I should be quiet. He is upstairs and he's supposedly sleeping, but if he hears this, yes, I love it so much. This is kind of I look like I'm just floating head existing here. Uh, I'm in the car. Turns out we're doing a late night trip to the grocery store. I say late night, it's 9.49 guys. It's literally not even 10 o'clock. How do people live like this? Uh, turns out one of the recipes does not make nearly as many things as I thought. I doubled the recipe and it's still only gonna make like 36 cookies. And 36 seems like a lot until you realize that I'm giving stuff to, I think, something like seven seven or eight families i can't i would need it to the count so it's like hey guys here's three cookies each uh so i'm gonna go out and get more stuff also now that you can see i'm bad in <laughs> just just an eye now the other eye <laughs> let's play a game shall we we'll call it <laughs> who opened this <laughs> I will give you one hint. It wasn't me. <laughs> I don't open things like I'm a wild animal. <laughs> All right. Early Christmas present. Early Christmas present. <laughs> what could it be? Vanity. It'd be a boat. It would be a very tiny boat. I don't think we would fit a on mystery it. Mystery box. The box has nothing to do with it. I just used an, a box that well, we had. Lower wheel. <laughs> it's what I've always wanted. <laughs> Ooh, it's a Christmas ornament. Aww. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> Show the people at home. Aww. That was a good face you made. It's Batman. It's Batman. All right, Merry Christmas, baby. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, let's ignore the incomplete disaster I've made out of the stove. But these are cracking me up because they look exactly like the magic pill that uh, Miracle Max gives to the guys to try and revive Wesley and Princess Bride. It's like. Have fun storming the castle, boys! <laughs> Boop. All right, here we have all of the boxes. They were labeled, but the dog is a lunatic and jumped in here. Oh, so we've got special beer for the fam the family member who it's for. It varies a bit depending on the family. So, uh, cool mugs for the sister and little kids. And then we've got chocolate covered marshmallows. We've got chocolate spoons. We've got little fun wearables. And then these are cool. <laughs> Pop rocks, essentially. Thought the kids would get a crack out, out of those. And then the tubs of goodies that we just made. So we're gonna go deliver these, finally. Batman, Batman. He's not interested. Oh, there he is, yay. Oh, and I made, for my mother-in-law, they got a tree this year, and we made, 
well, I made a little Batman ornament for her tree. So she'll like that. All right, we are off. All right, we just got home from delivering all of the care packages. Everybody has gotten their things. And now it is, we. it's, uh, what time is it? 6.37. Uh, we're going to eat dinner really fast. And then at 7, the surprise starts. And I don't know, I still don't know what it is. Good, good. Uh, it is at home, obviously, since I'm here with the Christmas tree. Uh, I'll let you guys know. All right, Batman. Do you want to tell them what we're doing? It is a, hold on, a Christmas Carol cocktail special. So it is a thing we're watching on the TV. And they sent a kit to make cocktails to drink. And there's a live chat. Hold on. So this is what we're looking at now. It starts in a, in a roughly 10 minutes. And we're gonna, we just scarfed some dinner. Now we're gonna make our cocktails that came in the kit. And that is why he needed to sign for the package because it came with alcohol. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> it's happening. Welcome to a Christmas Carol cocktail spectacular. I am your host for the evening, the ghost of Christmas uh, I officially won the internet today. <laughs> uh, so there was one actor who was playing the, we were, I don't know if I said that this is a rendition of the Christmas Carol. And there was one actor who was playing the ghost for all three, or like all three ghosts. And so he was like affecting different personalities for each one. And the ghost of Christmas present, I was like, he's channeling this actor. And I was like, I can picture him, but I cannot think of anything he's been in. So I was trying to, oh, that's why I took that up. Uh, I was trying to like think of a way to Google him so that I could show Jonathan. <laughs> so I, I will post a picture wherever there's space. I literally typed in old sassy white guy actor <laughs> and didn't even have to like, hunt through the results literally i hit enter and the guy's picture with his whole wikipedia page was the response i was like google news <laughs> apparently he is the sassiest of all old white guy actors <laughs> um yeah so i would like to claim that that's my amazing uh information science librarian skills <laughs> <laughs> that is apparently really just a mind meld with Google. <laughs> uh, and then also for future reference, I don't ever want to go to the theater again. I want all of our live theater to be on the couch in my pajamas with my uh, electric blanket and my cat snuggling me while my husband drink brings me drinks. Cause uh, not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome. The show was hilarious. So funny. Highly recommend. It's by After Hours Theater. Uh, After Hours brought to you by Jim Gaffigan. I will <clears throat> post a link down below in case anyone is interested in any of their other stuff. I guess they do a bunch of things. They have a wizard themed one. They did a... I keep trying to put my glasses on and then you... Um, yeah, they had a Hocus Pocus themed one apparently earlier. There was also a Clue one apparently. What? We missed out on a clue-themed one? I'm failing. I know. <sighs> what is my life? Anyway, thought I would check in and let you guys know that I won the internet. Oh, look. I some alcohol I cut a cup of. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys. I don't remember if I said anything earlier, uh, like last week, but we got a new Christmas tree this year because our old one wouldn't light up. Like, none of the lights worked. And we got one that's a little bit smaller than our old one. And we got it all set up and I'm like, it's kind of, it just has like a dinky feeling to it. Like the tree itself is super nice. But I, you know, like it doesn't really end that far below the ceiling and we've got this soffit there. But the thing is the whole thing, it's only six inches shorter than our other one. But the whole thing is smaller. And then you have this huge, huge gap between where the bottom of the tree is and the tree skirt. And it's not as bad once we got presents under it, but I was watching a video by one of my favorite YouTubers and she did a Dollar Tree hack on a thing that goes under the tree that she created 
to kind of hide the ugly fake tree stem. So I'm going to, I just finished making it. I'm going to slide it under there and we're going to do a before and after and hopefully it looks way better. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> looks so much better. It is literally a tub. I don't know what it's for. It's way too small to be for laundry, but it's like similar to a laundry tub. And I cut the handles off and then got like 10 packs of the jute rope and hot glued it on there. I went through like seven sticks of hot glue. But an hour later, and here we go. And I, I that looks so much better. So I'm going to slide the presents back under and yay. I will link her video. She's got a whole bunch of like ways to kind of spruce up your trees. Um, and it's all from, I think, I think all of the stuff that she does is with Dollar Tree supplies. So, hooray! So, I'm watching a very merry Yule log on uh, YouTube while I uh, do some reading. And there's a cat and a dog that keep running in and out of the scene. And Snow is very, very interested. <laughs> Where'd they go, Snow? I It has Christmas music that goes with it, but I didn't want to get, like copyright struck so I, I just muted it for the clip here but she's cracking me up she, my cats very rarely care about what's going on on tv so it's funny that she's like "Woo, there he is there's the kitty oh oh i thought he was gonna leave right as she looked up who's gonna be like and eh, i'm bouncing okay so for anyone that was guessing along with me i was right this one it's Jonathan Stockings. Stocking. You can see a little present sticking out. Uh, so anyway, thought I would do a follow-up since I asked for people to vote down below, which they thought was there, which was his. And I figured it would be rude to not follow up on that. Mm -hmm.